Shadow Rider on Alex's side of the field. For sure. As we head into this game number one, we get a chance to see a little bit more about how both of these trainers want to approach the matchup. Cody Sharp leading with a Coridon and the Chiyu, and Alex with the Shadow Rider Calyrex and the Amoongus. Honestly, props to Cody for picking this music. This is some really high energy stuff we got going on here, especially considering we have two very strong Pokemon on Cody's side of the field. We have the Coridon, which is threatening big damage with a Flare Blitz, and of course the Choice Scarf Chiyu, which should be acting first, will be able to threaten the Amoongus with a Fire type attack or the Calyrex with a Dark type attack. You can see the Covert Cloak on the Calyrex. That means if a Snarl comes through, the special attack will not be lowered. But of course, it is double weak to Snarl with that Ghost and Psychic typing. You don't want to take that anyway. No, you don't. But with a Terra Fairy, one way that you could bypass a lot of the weaknesses that you see on the other side. A uh, Fairy might not help you against some of these Fire type attacks that are coming out, but it'll certainly help you against the Dark type ones. It will. The Amoongus also has the potential to terrestrialize into a Water type, which could come in very handy here against the Sun team. Alex will opt to double protect. I think very smart on a team against this Coridon and Chiyu. You get to see what Chiyu locks into, and it is Heat Wave. So you ha now know that your Amoongus really doesn't want to stay on the field unless it turns into that water type. Yeah, but what do you have in the back that could also potentially switch into this? In the sun, it is going to be so hard to actually have anything that comes in, resist that damage, or just doesn't take too much from it. So I, I like the idea of even just locking in the heat wave here, yeah. knowing that it's boosted in the sun. Especially knowing that the best fire type switch in is the Incineroar, which just gets smacked by a collision course. We saw Cody double the Amoongus with that collision course in this turn, trying to cover that. Also covers a Water Terra very well, so a really great combination of attacks here, which give Cody so many options. Great uh, kickoff here. I'm thinking though, does this spec, does this Calyrex survive a heat wave? I think it can take one. I think it can take one heat wave, but it won't take it super well. We might need to go for something like a draining kiss to restore some of that HP. The Coridon actually is pretty heavily threatened by that, even without a calm mind boost, because the dragon fighting typing means it is very, very weak to it. Well, the Sumungus sees the two fire type, well, I say that, fire type as in, it's got a, it's got a flare blitz. Spirit. Yeah, it is his fire type of spirit with the Terra Fire there. But it's just going to go for the helping Ooh, hand, that tech oh no. choice. Helping to boost up this Chiyu's heat wave. And we talked about there not being too many switches oh. here. This Calyrex is just knocked out in one hit. And the Iron Hands took like 70% from a helping hand heat wave in the sun. That's an assault vest Iron Hands, everyone. Known to be very, very bulky, but is not enough to keep it from getting too KO'd by that spread heat wave. This is why Helping Hand came in so handy here. The Coridon could not have attacked prior to the Calyrex attacking, and knowing that the Calyrex's Terra type is fairy, it cannot terrestrialize into a resist for the fire typing. Probably knowing that heat wave calculation very well, the Calyrex had no chance there, and a really, really strong play by Cody, especially showing, I think, the collision course on turn one. Maybe that wasn't a play that Alex had in mind, thinking you could possibly take one heat wave, fire off one attack, but Cody covering that so well. Really did. Now Alex just has to go back to the drawing board, thinking about how to navigate through the rest of this game. You just lost a major source of damage in that Shadow Rider Calyrex and this poor Urshifu. You don't have a way to shut off this sun. So any of these water type attacks coming out, despite the fact that you have this Chiyu in front of you, don't feel very good. They really don't. I believe this Chiyu is also Terra Ghost. So if Cody wants to, he could go for another Helping Hand Heat Wave here with the Terra Ghost. Helping Hand, of course, having high priority, will act before a possible fake out from this Iron Hands. And of course, Terra Ghost means you cannot be faked out. The Choice Scarf, unless, I mean, we did see the, the speed interactions between Urshifu and Chiyu uh, in Eric Rios' set last, uh, yesterday on day one. But if you're a Ghost type anyway, the resisted Surging Strikes, immune to close combat, still a pretty strong option here. Fake out. It's gonna help though from this Iron Hand. It's going to stop oh. this Karite on its tracks, but this close combat isn't nearly enough to get the knockout. So even though you're stopping this Karate for one more turn, you're not stopping this Chiyu so that oh Iron Hands gosh. goes down after that small fake out and that Urshifu took so much damage. It's just the Amoongus and the Urshifu now left for Alex. And you saw who's in the back here for Cody. This game is locked. It really is. This has been a, such a strongly played game from Cody and really a very boldly played game as well. That Chiyu could have easily been knocked out by a close combat. We do confirm that Alex's Urshifu is also fast. Oh, has a focus sash so you can also withstand one hit but you also have the opportunity for like transform a score a couple of other options here but it is going to be an adjustment from both of these players alex is actually going to lead the shadow rider calyrex either on the bench or 
uh, in the back for now. And it's, it's going to be the Iron Hands and the Amoongus and Fluttermane for Cody next to this Coridon. Nice adjustment there. It catches the Iron Hands unaware. They do have the Focus Sash on Fluttermane, so one Heavy Slam won't be able to do the trick in terms of dispatching this Fluttermane, but there is a little bit less of a threat for this Amoongus now. And if you're Alex, you kind of took this more you know, methodical, slower approach to the beginning of this game. Iron Hands and Amoongus is a much more defensive lead. You give yourself a fake out option. If you're faking out this Coridon, Amoongus is very safe on this turn and can possibly try to fire off a Spore and let Alex re, re position from there. Fluttermane with this Protect, not going to take any damage at this turn and also keep the Focus Sash intact, but it's a double Protect, so whatever Alex was hoping to do on this turn isn't going to happen. So the Fake Out negated, and this Amoongus' follow-up with the Spore is also not going to be able to go through. The important thing to note, though, is the fact that now the Fake Out is off the table. Fake Out is off the table, so this Amoongus does have to worry about taking a possible Flare Blitz. And we've already seen Cody very willing to go for Collision Course into Amoongus, trying to cover for a possible Water-type Trastalization. Luckily for Alex, this Fluttermane is not carrying Shadow Ball, and Icy Wind is really not known for doing much damage, so it's not going to be doing too much to the Amoongus itself. If it does opt to Trastalize, then, then possibly you can survive a couple attacks and go for Spore. At the same time, are you willing to commit your uh, Terra to this Amoongus right off the bat? It's a really hard call because there could be that Raging Bolt in the back as we were talking about heading into the game. Yep. But it is time to Terrastalize, and that's going to be Alex going to Terrastalize in Amoongus. So it should hopefully be sticking around for this next turn. But even though you are going to be a water type, uh, which will help you against this Coridon, it means that this Dazzling Gleam is going to hurt just a little bit more. It does no longer resist it, and Flare Blitz does come out into the Amoongus, so a great Trastalization from Alex. Amoongus surely would have been knocked out if that wasn't the case. Drain Punch comes through into the Coridon, heals a good chunk of damage off from that Dazzling Gleam, and now Amoongus should be able to put something to sleep, crucially for Alex, which will clear up so much space for the rest of his Pokémon. It's going to be that Coridon. It's such a threatening Pokemon when you think about its ability to go for Flare Blitz and even just the Collision Course if you have Incineroar in the back. Um, well, uh, if the Body Press wasn't going to do it a couple of <laughs> sets ago, right. it sure will be a Collision Course. The issue now is this Fluttermane does still have access to the Fairy Terrestrialization. It is not the special attack boosting Protosynthesis set. We did see that speed get boosted from the sun. But at the same time, a Terra Flutter Fluttermane is still a Terra Fluttermane, and we have two Pokemon that are weak and neutral to Dazzling Gleam. And if that, Oh no. Yeah, that yep. Fluttermane wasn't going to do <laughs> a lot of damage before. The Beads of Ruin sure will help as it drops a special defense of both of the Amoongus and the Iron Hands on the other side. So, oh, this... Fluttermane is feeling so good. It has to, right? You, you've got a Iron Hands. That's like the thing that Fluttermane likes seeing the most. We've got an Amoongus that's no longer a poison type. You would love that if you're Fluttermane. Oh, you really do. As the Dazzling Link comes through, this Amoongus oh. gets knocked out, and the Iron Hands is not too far behind it. And with a Pokemon that's that slow, Chihu and Fluttermane are going to be outspeeding it both on the other side. Drain Punch does come through here. That's Big nice. into Chiyu. That is a massive KO for Alex, though. He heals so much damage from that Drain Punch. And of course, this Chiyu, which is holding that Choice Scarf, will be able to outspeed the Calyrex on Alex's side of the field. It's immediately gone. I really like that play, just making sure the Coridon is still threatened by that Drain Punch while it's asleep. And of course, covering for that Chiyu. That's a really great play for Cody to make because you do get the special defense drops on the Iron Hands and Amoongus from the Beads of Ruin. But Alex covers that so incredibly well. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, the one shot there heals up so much that with the Beads of Ruin now gone, I actually wonder if this Iron Hands would be able to survive. Maybe? I don't know. Certainly not a Moon Blast, but maybe a Dazzling <laughs> Gleam from here, which yeah. is important because if Cody is going for a Dazzling Gleam, that means that you're you're not Moon Blasting the Calyrex, and the Calyrex is kind of the big, uh, big threat right now. Take a look in the sun, though. This Raging Bolt hitting the field did get a special attack boost from that Protosynthesis, and it has Thunderclap. So if you were yeah. worried about having to outspeed something before, uh, now you definitely don't have to worry. Miss Iron Hands, of course, cannot protect as it is holding the Assault Vest. Fluttermane, nice defensive tech for that Trastalization as well. It is no longer weak to Astral Barrage, so it should be able to eat at least one Astral Barrage very comfortably. And Urshifu coming in here. I don't know if you're going to enjoy this Moon Blast. Ooh, yeah, I'm not sure about that one. But the Calyrex, at the very least, is going to stay safe. Oh, and no. you preserve the opportunity for Fake Out later. But this Moon Blast, as soon as Urshifu comes in, it's taken out of here. Well, the issue is, like, what, what else can you do, right? Either the Iron Hand stays in and gets Moon Blasted, 
and, and then gets knocked out, and then the following turn you just get Thunderclaps and, and one hit KO'd by the, the Sun Boosted Life Orb Thunderclap, or you just sacrifice the Urshifu now to give yourself one more fake out, and I think that probably is the correct play that Alex just exactly. made. Exactly. Just because you, you get so much more out of having a fake out active than you do with your Urshifu that's just kind of a sitting duck. Absolutely, but now you gotta play the 50-50. Cody, at the beginning of the game with the Iron Hands present, was comfortable just going for a double protect here on both of his Pokemon. So is it the same this time around? It's not. Alex calls it right, gets a chance to flinch the Fluttermane, the faster thing on the field, and the Calyrex is gonna use this opportunity to go for a Calm Mind. I think that's smart. You, you're sitting in front of two special attackers, and knowing that you're gonna be able to flinch the Fluttermane before it can attack, you get the option to boost that special defense, but even at plus one special defense, Thunderbolt does over half of the Calyrex's HP. But now the Protosynthesis is gone. If you want to turn it back on again, you've got to bring this Coridon onto the field, which is still asleep. It is asleep. I think you kind of have to though, right? You really want that Fluttermane to be outspeeding Calyrex because if you leave Fluttermane on the field without that speed boost now, it probably gets knocked out by the plus one Astral Barrage. And if you're able to get the speed boost back up, you can switch your Coridon back in, get the Fluttermane faster, knock out the Iron Hands before the Calyrex can attack. And then you're relying on Raging Bolt to pick up a KO with possibly a Thunderclap with, before the Calyrex can attack. Because at this point, you know, if, if the Coridon switches in and Fluttermane gets knocked out by Astral oh. Barrage, Coridon will too, and then the Calyrex is at plus three special attack. Well, I think Cody's gonna lock in and hope that the Thunderclap is gonna be enough to knock out this Calyrex, oh. but it's not because of the special defense boost from the Calm Mind. That Sun was so important, it might have been able to secure the knockout there. So, with the Calyrex, oh, survived. gets a huge knockout onto the Fluttermane, being able to take it out before it's able to actually get the lockdown onto this Iron Hands, yeah. means that the Iron Hands is free to go for a finishing blow onto this Raging Bolt with the Drain Punch. That's a knockout, and Cody, just like that, has the Coridon left. The Coridon's left, but I believe it's still asleep, and the, the Calyrex would be out speeding it anyway, so another really nice turn for Alex there. That was a really tough play. I, I think if you're Cody, you're, you have to be very tempted to switch that Coridon in. But at that point, like, I don't know. It, it, let's say let's say Coridon swapped in the prior turn. Fluttermane gets to Moonblast Iron Hands. Uh, and then the Calyrex takes two KOs. You're at plus three special attack. Based on that Astral Barrage damage, one Astral Barrage certainly KOs. But if you're trying to not get Thunderclapped, which with the Sun Boost would have also KO'd the Drain Punch very well, made it much more difficult for Cody to operate. We are moving into game three and Coridon and Raging Bolt the lead for Cody. Another great way to punish a possible Terra Water from the Samungus. And another switch up for Cody as well. It's been a different Protosynthesis partner yeah. <laughs> yep. next to this Pokemon <laughs> this entire game. To you, of course, to start for game number one, we'll call it a Protosynthesis Pokemon. <laughs> it's a fire type. It's close enough. <laughs> close enough. This is another situation, though, where the, the Iron Hands certainly threatens some good damage with Drain Punch, but the Amoongus is the more important target here. If you're able to, like, double into it with something like a Flare Blitz and a Thunderbolt from this Raging Bolt and Coridon, that's a nice way to cover for both Amoongus staying on the field and not terrestrializing, and also staying on the field and turning into that water type. Well, the Incineroar, though, making an appearance. This Intimidate isn't gonna do anything though because Raging Bolt's a special attacker and this Coridon is carrying that clear amulet. But just as we saw in that second game to start, this Coridon is going to go for a Protect as is the Raging Bolt. So Alex not really able to get anything else done this turn except to pivot in its Incineroar. Even the Amoongus is gonna fail to Protect <laughs> because there's nothing coming in its direction regardless. That's a really smart mix up by Alex to bring the Incineroar and also a very smart turn one. Leading the same exact thing, he saw Cody go for that double Protect on turn one of game two. He probably assumed Cody was gonna do the exact same thing in this third game. Took great advantage of that by swapping in the Incineroar, so now you still have a fake out active while neither the Coridon and Raging Bolt can protect. And that frees up so much space for the Samungus to go for a very important spore. It does, because there's still nothing in the pack that Cody can switch in to take that. Yeah, there's no, no safety immunities. goggles, there's no grass types. So the only option is to just let something go to sleep. Especially when you're going to commit a Terra into this matchup. It is going to be the Amoongus that takes the Terra Water. But can Cody actually call it? Does Alex feel safe enough to be able to go for this Water Terrestrialization? You have to imagine the Water Terra gives away that you're not going to let the Raging Bolt attack this turn. Does in fact get faked out, so no Thunderbolts from this Raging Bolt. But Collision Course does come out from this Coridon. No matter the target, it does big damage, correctly calls the Terra, and does a big chunk with that Collision Course, over half of Amoongus' HP. Yeah, but that still leaves it free to go for a Spore. And so if you were worried about that, 
weakness to those electric tip attacks, that Raging Bolt's now asleep and you don't have to worry about it anymore. You don't have to worry about it, but Alex still has to worry about this Coridon. You can't parting shot it again because of that clear amulet. Amoongus took so much damage from that collision course because Cody called that very well that now you have an Amoongus that will be knocked out by one more. Raging Bolt can pretty easily sit on the tier, sit on the field and take a turn of sleep here because the Incineroar does have the knockoff, does have parting shot, which kind of can real annoy it, but really doesn't threaten it with a whole lot of damage off the bat. Incineroar goes away, and Shadow Rider Calyrex <laughs> comes back out. But yeah, it is tough. You know that this Amoongus has the option to go for Protect, though. So that is one way that you could keep it safe, or you just play risky. And that's exactly what Alex did. No Protect coming out from this Amoongus, as it was hoping to land a Spore into that slot. Because either the Coridon switches out, or, yeah. I'm, w I'm wondering what Cody was doing with that Protect on Coridon. You have to imagine that the Coridon's really not being threatened at all with any kind of damage. It resists any possible damage Knock that could off. be thrown its way. Knock off to go to Clear Amulet could be useful later on. But the opportunity to go for another collision course into that Amoongus might have been really nice. It could have been a knockout there, which would have put him at the Pokemon advantage. Well, Rage Powder is so nice to have in front of this Calyrex because it can just go for these Calm Minds. A great way for it to be able to stave off a lot of the special attack from the special attack heavy team. Raging Bolt, Fluttermane, Chiyu, all great partners for this Coridon that might have struggle to get actually any damage down onto right. the spec uh, this Spectre, <laughs> the Spectre Calyrex Rider. The what Spectre part is like it's like, right, it's like right in front of your face. I always try to say, I, know, <laughs> I catch right? myself saying it too. It wakes up the one turn sleep from Raging Bolt. A big Thunderbolt comes through here and we saw oh. it do over half last game. Same exact damage roll. This Calyrex now, because of that one turn sleep, is in a much worse position because you have to worry about those sun-boosted thunderclaps. You do, because this time around, that could be enough. Yeah. And not to mention the fact that this Coridon is helping hand. Right. <laughs> so that's, yeah, it'll just for sure be able to pick up the KO in that way. And we also see the Chiyu there in the back for Cody. That means that Cody will have the option to outspeed this Calyrex. You still have the Terrestrialization available, so you can protect yourself from fake outs with that Ghost Terra if it comes down to it. But this Calyrex now, because of that one turn sleep, ugh, that was a really rough turn of events there. It was. I mean, the Iron Hands is at least available to try to go for something like a fake out. But this would be the turn to do it. The Chiyu is going to hit the field to activate the Beads of Ruin to really make sure that if this Electric Terra wasn't going to put the Raging Bolt over the top, then surely this ability <laughs> is going to do just that. It, yeah, this Electric Terra now a Thunderclap almost definitely in conjunction with the Trastalization and the Beads of Ruin ability from this Chiyu could allow this Raging Bolt to KO the Calyrex, and the fake out is called correctly. The Chiyu has been flinched, and Call Mine comes through. Cody did not go for Thunderclap. This could be a massive Thunderbolt to KO Calyrex. It could, because that Electric Terra on top, with the modifier from the Beads of Ruin, this Thunderbolt, even though this Calyrex is going to be at plus two special defense, that's oh. it. It doesn't wow. get a chance to attack at all this game. That was a really cool play from Cody there. That's a very risky play too. I, I think Cody now taking advantage of the fact that, okay, Alex has been calling my protects on these fake outs. I'm not gonna protect this time. I'm going to attack. I'm gonna switch in this Chiyu. Make sure my Raging Bolt has the firepower to KO through another possible Calm Mind. Really expertly well played there because now this Terra Electric Raging Bolt in the sun, well, there's no sun anymore, but Coridon's still around, can come back and set it back up, is a massive, massive threat. Even a, a Thunderbolt into Incineroar could do a whole lot of damage too. It's too bad because that Calyrex does have access to Protect too. Yeah. And with that sun expiring, would have at least helped to limit a little bit of damage from that special attack boost yeah. to the Raging Bolt with the Protosynthesis wearing off, but still not out of it yet. This Iron Hands could be beneficial as the Fluttermane is going to take the place of that TU and be revealed as Cody's fourth and final in this game, the Protect from the Raging Bolt. It's such a big threat right now. You have to imagine that Alex is thinking about it, but instead goes after the Fluttermane. Really nice call. Knocks off the Focus Sash, even though it would have been broken regardless, but the Drain Punch to follow it up. At the very least, Alex targeted the right slot with that damage. Right, calling the Protect there in this case, but there's really not a whole lot Cody could have lost. Like, let's say, for example, Alex heavy slammed that slot and the Fluttermane got knocked out. I think you're still fine, right? Like, there's there's no issue here. Cody has so much damage left at his disposal with the Coridon, with the Chew, with the Raging Bolt. He's able to take down our reigning champion, Alex Gomez, and bounce back from a poor performance in Indianapolis to be 